everybody. Welcome to AM Soaps. We are going to be making a honeysuckle fragranced soap using this fragrance oil called Honeysuckle Hollow from Candora Soaps. Now you might see here my setup is different than usual. This is a whole lot of containers, a whole lot of weighing and measuring. I am making five pounds of soap, but I'm making it one pound at a time. And that is because I want to do a gradient layered soap and I'm using this floral fragrance so I can't do that all at once I need to do it one pound at a time I'm going to color the batter with the titanium dioxide and three more colorants from creations from Eden this is a violet African ultramarine a very pretty purple a blue pearl blue mica this is from a soap supplier in Edmonton, Creations from Eden. And then another very, very pretty purple. This is Pearl Violet Mica with a touch of a shimmer. So I'm going to be using these colorants to create a gradation from darkest to lightest. As I stick blend these one pound batches of soap batter, I am going to show you the first one at regular speed, and then I'm going to speed up the last four. That's because they really just repeat. So I hope you enjoy and I'll play some pretty music. Thank you. 
back to cut the soap. I have uh, left this again for about a day and a half, almost two days, and it's ready to cut. I've already cut a few pieces. I am outside in my little garden area today because it's so, two reasons, it's so nice out. And the other reason is this is a floral, so I thought it just makes perfect sense to cut my floral soap out in the flowers. So that's why I'm outside. So this is what I have so far. My lines are not as straight as I wanted. Here's the, to the loaf. Now I don't think you could tell in the video because I sped it up. It was, it was repetitive, right? It was like mix, mix a pound of batter, color it, pour it, mix a pound of batter, color it, pour it. That was pretty repetitive, so I sped it up, and I don't think you got to see that even though I was only making a pound at a time and working as quickly as I could, it was still seizing on me. So if you use the honeysuckle fragrance, be warned, it might not happen to you. It depends on your recipe and where you live and conditions. Uh, but it happened to me, and that's why my lines aren't that straight. Because I, I find you can only get, this one's pretty good. You can only get these straight lines if you do two things. You need a very liquid batter, and you need a perfectly level surface that you're working on. Uh, I guess you need three things because I'm going to add a third. And you also need to give the second, the, la the layer above oh, the first layer, enough time to get hard enough so they don't mix, they don't blend. Now that wasn't my problem because it was seizing and it was, it was hardening up like as I was pouring it. So my problem wasn't time. My problem was that it wasn't liquidy enough. So if you really want a true straight line, I advise you don't use a floral. Um, I am later this year going to make some rainbow soaps and I am, I'm thinking, right now I'm trying to decide which fragrances to use. I definitely will not use one that accelerates at all. So, I'm thinking of multiple fragrances. There's one I really liked from Sapphire Blue called French Pear. And the, yeah, the French Pear has a yellow tinge to it. I thought, well, that would be perfectly fine for when you get to the part of the rainbow. Oh, I need to turn this around. In the warmer part of the spectrum, you know, the yellows and the reds. Maybe even the green. So I could use French pear for the, gr the green, the yellow, the orange, and then maybe the cherry. The black cherry one doesn't have any acceleration at least I didn't have any acceleration and I did not have any color it didn't morph or change color or darken so <clears throat> I think I will use multiple fragrances and do it similar to how I did this one work in multiple mixes that's not bad also I don't think I mentioned it yet I don't remember I'm not happy with this color at all. This is not what I wanted. Um, I, it doesn't, it's pretty obvious when you look at it that that's not right. That's not in the same scheme at all. It's a gray. I wanted a color, obviously, between these two pink purples. That's a gray. So it is not what I wanted, but you know, I think it's pretty. It actually adds some interest to the soap that. Maybe if I had gotten it perfect, it would actually be boring. So this is kind of an interesting look having this little accent of gray show up in the middle of the soap. And the smell is wonderful. If you like florals, this is a beautiful soap. 
wonderful honeysuckle. So it's kind of similar to the lilac. It's um, very strong. It's a very strong floral. And it is very pretty. It reminds me of when you're on vacation at a resort or something and you just get a whiff of something and you're like, say you, you would just have to stop and breathe because it's so pretty. And you think to yourself, what is that smell? That's what this smells like. Like it even has a little bit of a, a wood smell to it. Like, I don't know if you know what I mean, but. I've smelled that smell in Australia and in the Caribbean, this beautiful smell. And this is also a very creamy soap. It has the shea butter in it. Let's see. Here we go. Again, I'm going to start from the other side. This is what I did last time I cut soap out here. I get to a point where I get a little bit unsure of my markings. I have a tape actually here that I could use as a guideline, but I never really like the way they work. They always come out too chunky. So I actually used a ruler to measure each one. That's an end piece. Now I chose purple because I don't really have any purple soaps and this is an opportunity to add some purple to my display. I have the topping of the lilac is the only one that has any purple in it. One. I still have a touch of my allergies. It's helped me that in the last few days it has rained. The rain helps. It kind of just settles all that dust and pollen down. And this last one. 